Alrighty then, this is a video on how to make gravy. Um, and this is from the crock pot. So this is where my small roast was in the crock pot. So in the crock pot was less than a three pound rump roast. I put in two jars, two pint jars of my own beef broth from 2012 actually and a three quarters of a cup of red wine and in the crock pot I had carrots and onions and it cooked about five hours so all I've done is pour into this large skillet the liquid and there's a lot of flavoring in this that came from the roast and the onion and the carrots so I'm going to bring this to a rolling 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 boil and I'm going to add to it some flour and water. I now, thanks to the peachy prepper, use guar gum, but this is a half a cup of flour and about a half to three quarters cups of water. And I'm going to shake it, shake it, shake it up. And what I'm going to do is bring this to a boil. And you'll see that this grease that's on here will cook off. This is the basic of gravy making, no matter what kind of gravy you're making. There's no coloring added to this. This was the color of my beef broth. It's very easy to make thick, delicious gravy. It ain't hard, people. It's just making gravy. So my burner is on high. This should not need salt or pepper because my roast had salt, pepper, garlic powder on it. But of course, you can taste it um, at this stage to see if you need to add anything to it. But there's a lot of flavor in here from the carrots, the roast, and the onions. So I'm going to let this come to a rolling boil and I'm going to keep it moving around and stirring it. And then I'm going to slowly add that flour and water mixture. It's not hard to make good gravy. You can't burn this, okay? Can't mess it up. And you can absolutely make good gravy by adding canned broth, you know, from Campbell's or somebody. So you can make good gravy. It's not hard. Just takes a minute and it's very hot standing next to a skillet that is boiling hot and what went in there is boiling hot from the crock pot for several hours. It's just gravy. Don't be scared. So when people tell you you cannot make a good gravy if you cooked a roast or a pork roast in your crock pot, they're wrong because you're still getting all the flavor from that roast. And if you can see what's in this. So you can make a great gravy from a crock pot roast. But what you can't do is if I were to right now add my flour and water, it's going to be lumpy because this isn't boiling. This is going to be boiling, boiling, boiling. It's been about 10 minutes already and it's on high on a propane stove. Then I will add my water and flour mixture and then I'll continue stirring. If I don't, my flour's not going to break up in there and it's going to be icky lumpy. Ain't nobody want that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So you can see it is starting to boil, but that is not the boil you're looking for to add your flour and water. That's just a boil. We're looking for bubbling, bubbling, boiling, boiling. Ain't ready yet. Alrighty then, now we got a boil. And I got the fan on so it's a little more noisy. And you can see there's less volume in it because a lot of that liquid has burned off. I want to keep it boiling so this flour doesn't ball up. And it is hot. Wrap a bandana around your head. It is hot. Okay, still boiling. And if you're making gravy for a lot of people, you can stretch this gravy by adding a substantial amount of flour and water. I ain't, it's just two grown ups. It's hot. 
So it's probably reduced easily by half with all that boiling. That's a little lone half stick of carrot floating around in there. And today is the Walking Dead Marathon. So I'm watching that over my shoulder. I have to mute it while I record. Okay, so let's see if you can see through the steam. It's returning to a big boil. Oops. Tripods are drinking. Hang on, I got technical difficulties. That was operator error. I hadn't really screwed my camera down after I changed the batteries. That is a beautiful, rich brown. I'll see if I can remember to put a picture in of my turkey gravy that I do like this, that the next day after being in the refrigerator is nothing short of righteous looking, like a gem. So I've only added half of my flour water concoction. So now I'm going to turn this down to low and see how it thickens up. And then I shall return and show you. But you see, that is a boil, people. That is burling. Blow it out the way you can see. It's just gravy. It ain't hard. Don't buy that stuff in a can. It's garbage. Or the jar. Ew. And you cannot can gravy. You can't. You can freeze it. But why? We eat it. So if you notice where the ridge is, the ring around this, it has reduced by half. So that boiling long before putting in the flour and water burned off a lot of that liquid. And now it's thickening up real nice. looking good. So let's turn it down on my simmer burner and it's going to slowly thicken up. If you can see it's already thick. Need the back of the spoon. You can't cook it too long. You can't mess it up at this point. The only way you mess up good gravy is you add your flour water mixture when it's not boiling heavy enough. I'll show you what it looks like shortly. So we make New Orleans style po' boys with this wicked gravy. And just to give you an example how thick that gravy got, it's a beautiful thing. So we actually put the gravy on our bread. And I have a video on how to make those. But the reason they're so good is due to the gravy. So it's not hard to make gravy. And if I can remember, I'll put that picture to show you what it looks like after it's in the refrigerator. It comes like a gel. It's a beautiful thing. Make you some. Yes, you can. This is what that gravy looks like after being in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah. Rich gravy.